Welcome, sports bettors from around the world. What is up, everybody? Welcome back, to Sports Gambling Daily for a Monday. It is December second. Isn't that crazy, Philly? It's December already. We are only twenty, what, twenty-three days away from Christmas. Yeah, man, <laughs> it is crazy. Everywhere you go, you see the Christmas lights. We just got done with Thanksgiving. Actually, woke up this morning to a little bit of snow on the ground. So I guess it is December after all. Yikes! Snow, <laughs> man. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, miserable. I don't miss that stuff at all. Oh, so, uh, all right, we got NBA slate to get into today. We got six games on the NBA board, and we're going to go through each and every single one of them. We're going to talk about, you know, our initial leans. Uh, remember, guys, this is early, so this is our initial leans. These, there's no guarantees. There's nothing, you know, you know. these are just leans, and we're going to kind of talk about what we like and what we don't like. So this weekend, what that's something I didn't like. We had a we had a pretty bad weekend, and we're gonna you know at least on the pregame side. Now on the live betting side, man, crushed it. So mm-hmm. what we lost on the 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 premium live the premium pregame bets, we made up for it on the premium live bets in the private group. So in the in the in the premium uh, live area. So. You know, that's one of the positive things that we have going on over here at SGD is if you become a member, we have a premium in-game betting area. So, uh, you know, you can kind of hedge out of things and then possibly even find ad- advantages going forward. Totally agree. I mean, we, we've we always talked about it. You're never going to be perfect. You can handicap a game, feel like you got it right. Something doesn't play out in your favor. You end up losing. I mean, you're going to have weekends or days you know, where it doesn't always work out favorably. But to your point, you know, after you watch it and you see how it's going, you can find favorable positions in game live and, you know, take the other side or whatever the case may be and kind of, you know, work your way out of maybe any little mistake you made early pregame. But at mm-hmm. the end of the day, man, uh, you know, I believe in what's going on here and, um, you know, we'll continue to strive to give you the best information and selections possible. Um, and it's going to begin really today with the NBA card that we have going on here. Yeah, one example of the in-game betting is I took LaSalle. Uh, they were, what, getting 16 and a half at one point to to Villanova, and they covered. Yeah, and, you know, that that was a nice little uh, win there. And then also the Wizards last night, I took them at 20, plus 26 and a half. Yep. I mean, that covered by one and a half points, man, because the Wizards just got <laughs> extremely just, just the doors blown off. Uh, a lot, a hundred and like 170, 275 points in that game, or maybe more than that. It was a lot of points in that in that game. Yeah. So, uh, it was. you know, the Wizards do what they do, man. They don't play defense. So, um, yeah. But overall, it was a it was a profitable day for SGD. Uh, you know, especially with the in game live betting. Definitely so, and uh, that's it'll be more of that that goes on today. We got a bunch of games still. We got some uh, Monday night football. We have six games on the NBA card or some NHL later as well. Mm-hmm. So we will be getting into all that. And uh, you know, if you join us, um, you'll have uh, you know access to the group, and we'll continue to move forward with that as well. Yeah, that reminds me. There, if you took the Patriots at plus fourteen and a half, mm-hmm. well, cash that one too because. You know, they came back and they tried to win that game at the end there. Um, Tom Brady looks awful. This might be his <laughs> last year, right? I mean, he does not look good. The whole, t- I mean, for them being 10 and 1 or now 10 and 2, I'm surprised. Yeah. But, um, yeah, their offense was pretty abysmal. There's no question about that. Um, yeah. he was frustrated on the sidelines, you know, not screaming at his players, but mm-hmm. you, know, you could kind of read his lips like, you got to be more explosive off the ball. You got to do this. You got to do that. It was really good. Nothing. You come in and kept kept showing him. He was just sitting there, like in a daze almost. It was like something you don't really see with him too often. Yeah, very weird. I I will say this: anybody who had the under live in that game has got to be killing themselves because that was that was unbelievable. The way that ended. I mean, Jesus Christ! I can always I can almost hear people punching a hole through their wall (laughs) to have a backdoor cover like that. Yeah, that was pretty bad. All right, Philly. Let's get into the first one. We got Phoenix taking on Charlotte. Charlotte is at home. Phoenix, man, we got this, we got a team coming in, you know, traveling f- from the West Coast, and they're they're laying four on the road. A little surprised by that number. Uh, Charlotte has played decent, except notwithstanding the Buc- the Bucks game, right. where they just got obliterated. I mean, I don't know what it was with that game. They just didn't come to play. I mean, they're the Bucks are a good team, but man, 
Charlotte got blown out that day. Sure did. Um, what do you think, man? Phoenix covers the spread here? Well, uh, you know, I guess sort of off the bat, I kind of was looking at that and thinking, you know, she, you think they should, but I will say Charlotte does seem to play better at home. Um, right. And, and they have been better recently outside of what you just mentioned. I mean, yeah, the, the Bucks game is the one game was standing, but, uh, I don't know. Phoenix has come back to earth a little bit, you know, um, they got out to that really, really hot start. Uh, it looks like, you know, Aaron Baines is probable. So mm-hmm. that obviously is big for them. Um, looks like miles or excuse me, Mikhail Bridges is questionable. Check the Allo being out is kind of a problem though. He's been really, really good with, with for them over the last say week to 10, 10 games, but, uh, Charlotte showing no injuries. Should be a tough game, a tight game. Um, I don't know, man. I, I I might lean Charlotte at home just because I like the way they play there, but I certainly couldn't make an argument for Phoenix. I mean, they have, you know, they got some pieces that can get it done. What are your thoughts on well, that? Their last meeting, which was uh, January 19th of last year, uh, Charlotte won 135 to 115. Mm-hmm. Hornets, uh, you know, I guess they're kind of juggling high a little bit as well, along with the rest of these teams is, you know, they played Detroit really well, and I think that they can play the Suns well, but the, can the Suns just outrun the, the Suns and the Hornets kind of play a similar basketball? They like to run mm-hmm. and gun, but so maybe considering that, maybe an over might be uh, a better look at. I'm not sure. Uh, Teddy Rozier is 20 and 35, 20 of 35 from three point range in his last five yeah. games. <clears throat> yep. You know, Devin Booker, he's been chucking up those threes as well, but not hitting as many. He's six of 29. You know, Charlotte owns a five game winning streak in the series. So for Suns to be giving up four on the road is, I don't know, I mean, I kind of lean the, the Charlotte Hornets here to keep it close. The, the over under is two twenty five and a half, And I kind of lean the over there. Well, the total apparently has gone over in nine of Charlotte's last nine games against Phoenix. Now, I realize it, it probably doesn't include half these guys, but uh, mm-hmm. it's still an interesting trend for sure. Um, yeah, early on, I would as well, I would think Charlotte as well. I mean, especially at home and especially if they're able to, you know, hit their shots, which they seem to do pretty well at home. And they're, they're both decent against the spread, both these teams, mm-hmm. Phoenix being uh, eight, uh, 10 and 8 against the spread and uh, Charlotte being uh, looks like 10, 10 and 1. So. Um, they cover some spreads, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I would lean Charlotte at least early on. Yeah. I kind of like the over better though, just because mm-hmm. both of these teams, uh, philosophy on the court, I think t- tends to lean towards the over, um, let's yep. move on to the Utah jazz taking on the 76ers, man, the jazz, what the hell is going on with the Utah jazz? Yeah, um, man. they got, they got blown out the mm-hmm. um, yesterday. Yeah. And then you got the 76ers who's just kind of, you know, even keel doing what they got to do. They're they're uh, fourteen and six, uh, seven and three in their last ten, th- but three and seven and against the spread in their last ten. Right. All right. So here's a this might be a trap game here because Utah getting blown out and not really being competitive in a lot of games lately. Um, getting five and a half versus a, a, a good Phillies team. Do you? Th- mm-hmm. I mean, is this the game that they keep it close, or are they just going to get continue to get waxed out there on the road? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, yeah, I watched that game yesterday. You're right, and then it got to the point where he started pulling guys out. You know, sort of towards the end of the game a little bit. I guess getting prepared for this game, kind mm-hmm. of figuring you know that was over and why he tried to overexert. Um, one thing, the Sixers are undefeated at home. They play very well there. They always seem to figure out ways to win. Um, they had a tough match up their last game, but came up with some nice defensive stops and was able to pull the victory out there as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't know, man. I mean, the Sixers are interesting because they, they tend to win games, but they don't they don't cover the spread an awful lot. Uh, that seems to be one of their biggest Achilles heels, not that, you know, in the grand scheme of games, that's really what matters. But in, in the betting world, it certainly does. Sure. Um, I don't know, man. I, I, I like the Sixers in this game, and I, I do actually, looking at the injury report, it looks like the only questionable situation at the moment is Josh Richardson, and and I do think that's a problem because they yeah. end up putting Korkmaz in, and they lose a lot on the offensive end and defensive end uh, with that. So I would expect a bounce-back game from um, Utah, but they frankly have just not been playing all that well, and Sixers being at home with that crowd um, – I like. I actually like them to cover this game. Okay. Yeah, I kind of like that as well. 
Um, the you got Embiid. He scored 27 points and 16 rebounds in an earlier loss at Utah. Now, that was last year. The thing is, is I just kind of think that they. Uh, I don't know, man. I think the actual seven. I think seventy six actually covered this. But Jazz have been playing really poor. I don't see yep. any anything from the Jazz lately. What I kind of like even more though is the under under two hundred eight. I think this might be a little uh, slow paced, you know, grinded out kind of game for both teams. It, it certainly could be, especially on a second game of a back to back for Utah. I mean, I, I hear you there. Um, yeah, that's actually an interesting angle. I like that. Uh, all right, let's go into – oh, let's go ahead and make that our play that we do our contest on, guys. And for everybody new here, might want to know, what what are you talking about, contest? How do I win? Well, here, I'm going to flash the rules up here. And, guys, it's it's simple. You know, follow those three rules, guess the exact score, and you get a week's worth of our premium selections and access to our premium live in-game betting group for seven days if you can guess that exact score all right so we got golden state taking on atlanta man this is such a awful game here um (laughs) atlanta are they even an nba team after what we saw the rockets do to them yeah really it's funny too because they're starting to get healthy finally a little bit and yeah they got killed man yeah, and you got a Golden State team that nobody knows a player on that team, and they have the same record for the most part. They have the same amount of wins as the Hawks do. So both teams are sporting a, a four-win season so far. And right now, Atlanta is laying six and a half to Golden State. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that is a weird spread for two teams that are kind of playing similar basketball right now. Mm-hmm. Um, one, one thing I'll say about Golden State is they definitely do play hard. Um, I tend to watch a lot of their games just because they're later. And, you know, I, I like to watch as much NBA as possible. But whether they win or whether they lose, they'll give you their effort from, you know, the beginning till the end, um, which is probably going to bode well for when they start to get actually healthy and get their pieces back because there are some guys that are going to be able to implement. There's just sort of got a chance to be a pretty good team again going forward. But at the here and the now, I don't know, man. Atlanta, it, I, for me, this game comes down to whether or not Trey Young goes off. I mean, if he goes right. off, then that team's really impossible to beat. If he's limited at all or he has a rough night or doesn't shoot well, I, yeah, Golden State getting six and a half might look that. Look at that. I mean, I know it's a back-to-back and all that. And Draymond Green, I, I think they said there was he's questionable. Let me just see if it says anything about him. Aaron, what about D'Angelo Russell? He's still out with that hand injury, is he not? He's out. Oh, no, you hear it is doubt, uh, doubtful. Oh, no, that was yesterday. Draymond Green was doubtful yesterday. So, I mean, maybe he plays today, or yeah, I guess that's something you got to keep your eye on. But uh, mm. <clears throat> early on, before I see the injury report officially in the lineups, I would I would actually tend to lean Golden State just just because of um, kind of how how they how hard they play and and how they they tend to, to give teams some trouble. Yeah. Oh, there's no doubt. Uh, I th- yeah. The, I, the most important part of here is Golden State likes to play, it, it plays hard. It's not like they're giving up on a day in day out basis, which I can't say the same for the Hawks. Right. Um, yeah. Give me the points. Warriors like to cover, man. Uh, I mean, they. Do you have their stats on there for the actual overall covers? Because in the last ten days, or I'm sorry, last ten games, they're six and four against the spread, where the Hawks are four and six. Yeah, and they're like mirror images of each other. If you yeah. look, like offensively, Golden State's twenty first, and you know Atlanta's nineteenth. And on the defensive side, Golden State's twenty sixth, Atlanta's twenty eighth. I mean, they're very, very similar type teams. And because of that, if they're similar teams, and you're giving, I'm, I'm going to take. I think I'd lean taking the team with the points. Yeah, yeah. If you have, yeah, exactly right. If you, you have two similar teams, especially two bad teams, nobody is. I guess I would have to say Atlanta has a more dynamic offense if it gets going. Right, uh, but Golden State's scrappy, man. It, the record is very deceiving. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to lean Golden State plus the points. Um, all right, let's move on to the Pacers taking on the Memphis Grizzlies. Memphis is at home, laying six and a half versus the Pacers squad. That it, it's been pretty good lately. Um, seven and three in their last ten. Six and four against the spread in their last ten. And you have uh, a Memphis team, four and six, six and thirteen overall. So four and six in their last ten. So do you feel like six and a half is too much to give here in this spot to the Grizzlies? Not without, not, not without Jerome Moran. Um, 
actually he's out with a back, you know, for a while. And, you know, Jonas Valanciunas is questionable. I mean, certainly, you know, he's like, he's their center. So, um, no, I don't think it's a lot now, especially missing one of the most dynamic players that team has. Mm-hmm. Um, and, fra- and frankly, I just watched, you know, Indiana play a really tough game against the Sixers that the Sixers squeezed the game out at home the other day. They got Miles Turner back. Sabonis is, you know, a nice player. Um, so with that being said, I mean, yeah, sure. Could Memphis, you know, cover this or, you know, could they stay within the number? Sure. But I, I would lean Indiana right now. And I actually think it goes to seven or, or I'm showing minus what, six and a half right now. Yeah. You know, and you're, I agree with you completely, Philly. Uh, you know, I mean, let's watch out with Grayson Allen, man. He's, he's out there shooting three pointers, but it's not yeah. enough. It's not enough. Miles Turner had an awful game on Saturday, shooting one for eight uh, from the field. It doesn't matter, man. I, I kind of like the Pacers here, and I kind of like the Pacers in a somewhat somewhat blowout. I mean, the Pacers played the Sixers tough, and you know, yeah, they probably got up for that game. So could there be a little bit of regression here? Yeah, possibly. Um, you know, sure. they're not going to have as you know as as motiv- much motivation as they would have been the Seventy Sixers, but. I still like the Pacers to go ahead and and take care of the Grizzlies here. And frankly, they're coming off a back to back too. I mean, they just beat Minnesota um, last night, and Minnesota mm-hmm. does not play the defense that the Pacers play. You know, Pacers are what uh, ranked eighth in defense versus Charlotte, which is twenty seventh. I mean, they're both right. mid pack offensively, but yeah, I think it's too many points, or um, it's not enough points, right? And I and I do think Indiana is going to cover this. You, you, you Point, mean, uh, Mem- Memphis is ranked twenty seventh. Uh, did I say that wrong? I'm sorry. Yeah, you said Charlotte. Uh, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> sorry. I'm looking at the color <laughs> of the team. Yeah, Char- yeah, exactly. Memphis is ranked 27th. I apologize. All right, cool. All right, so uh, yeah, Pacers it is. Um, let's see here. Knicks taking on the Bucks. Knicks are catching 15 and a half. Now, can the Knicks <laughs> do what they did versus the 76ers against the Bucks? Is it possible <laughs> that they yeah. can just play them tough? Uh, play them. Close over unders two twenty two and a half. Initial off the jump, I kind of leaned over there, but also the Bucks, man, fifteen and a half is is that just too many points, or are the Bucks team designed differently? I mean, we you and I both said that they have trouble covering double digit point spreads, but that wasn't yeah. a problem versus the Hornets. No, it wasn't, and uh, you know Marcus Morris is supposed to be questionable with a back. I mean, he's you know he's a big part of their offense. I don't know if he's a leading scorer, but if he's not, it's him and Julius Randall are pretty neck and neck with that. Mm-hmm. Um, take him out. I mean, that's certainly a problem uh, on that end. You know, Brooke Lopez is out. Is downgraded to doubtful, so they're just slide his brother in, and they are two different players. I mean, I mean, Brooke likes to shoot the three, and Robin's more of a of a lower post presence. But uh, I hear you, man. I don't know that. I think I would stay away personally from this game pregame. I just think it's too too difficult to figure. I guess it's a ton of points, but yeah. um, I think it's more an opportunity to actually for an in-game live situation where you might be able to catch a more favorable line. To be honest with you, but yeah. would it would it surprise me if if the Milwaukee Bucks don't cover this? No, because that's it's a sixteen point spread and that's a ton. Yeah, I mean if if if, if New York is hitting any of their shots or they're you know they're, they're they can stay within that number certainly. Yeah, I agree. They. uh I mean, the Knicks cover stuff like this from time to time. Five and five against the spread in their last ten. Yeah, yeah, you know, and they're not too bad on the road, but um, as far as against the spread. But uh, the, the Bucks, man. I mean, overall seventeen and three, amazing. Uh, ten and zero in their last ten, but uh, four and six against the spread in those last ten games. So I kind of lean the Knicks, but I agree with you. We might need to just keep our eye on it and you know go in game. And, uh, you know, because, man, if the, like you were saying, if the Bucks get out to 15-0 or even just get out to a lead, let's say they start covering this. Like, for instance, when the Bucks played the Hornets, they were pretty much covering the spread, like, within the first couple of minutes. So the score was, what, like 12-3 to or something. And, you know, you could have got a much more favorable line for yeah the Hornets later on. Now, would it have mattered? I don't know because I think – I can't remember the final score of that game, but the Milwaukee took care of business in that game. But um, no, you're right of, about that, though. Kind of weird, though. There was a lot of blowouts the uh, last couple of days. So, um, you know, which there hadn't been that many, there hadn't been like 40 point games all season. And then all of a sudden, just they started happening <laughs> like, all left and right everywhere. So, yeah. 
Um, all right, let's finish this up. We've got the last game on the docket. we got the, the Bulls taking on the Sacramento Kings. The Bulls are still on their West Coast road trip. And, uh, you know, they're, they're coming to Sacramento and they're laying – or they're getting five. The Bulls are getting five points. Sacramento is laying five. Sacramento just had a good win. And, um, you know, now they get the Bulls coming in. Bulls played the, – the Trailblazers tough. We see a, a situation here where the Bulls, Zach Levine and company can come in here and steal this game. Yeah, I mean, certainly they could. Um, uh, Zach Levine, I mean, you got a guy like that that can put up 50 on any given night. Certainly you're going to always have a shot. Um, but I will say I, I do like the way the Kings have been playing. They are cover machines, really. Yes. They even they figure out ways, man. They, they look like they're, they're out of it. They're down 12 with two and a half minutes to go, and the next thing you know it's a three-point game. You're like, what the hell just happened? Yeah. But – but, you know, he's still uh, – you know, obviously, Darren Fox is still out, but he's been. And Marvin Bagley is out, and he's been. And Trevor mm-hmm. Ariza is questionable, but he's been out. So, it's the same team. You got Bogdanovich coming off the bench. Um, Buddy Heald, although he was really, really cold the other game. I mean, he couldn't hit anything, and they still figured out a way to come back and cover. So, I like what they've been doing, man. They've been playing as a team, and they've been playing really tough. They're gritty. They really, really are. And when they get healthy, they, they, they could be interesting. Very dangerous. To Philly's point – the Kings are nine and one against the spread. Listen to that, guys. Yeah. Nine and one against the spread in their last ten yep. games. Yep, that is the epitome of a cover machine. Yeah, I mean, you know, Chicago is is good. You know what, man? Dude, now the more I look at this, this that I like that line. I Sacramento minus five is nice. I mean, that's mm-hmm. under under a six point spread. Uh, I think they cover initially unless something crazy happens. Um, and and. And I don't think it stays at five unless you have a different opinion. I think it goes to five and a half at least. Oh, yeah, I think so, too. I think it's going to move. Um, you know, to the King's point, Rashawn Holmes collected 13 points and 10 rebounds on Saturday. Okay. That's good. good for his sixth double-double of the season. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sacramento also took both of these meetings last season, um, including a blowout at home. So the same situation here. The Kings won 129-102 to 102 last year. You know, it looks like on the other end, Chandler Hutchinson probably won't play for Chicago. Right. Um, I kind of like the Kings here. You know, Me and too. I think you're right. I think the line's just going to get worse if uh, if we if we wait. Yeah, I, I mean, initially, this is actually my favorite game on the board right mm-hmm. now. As we did this, this is the one that I like the most. So, you know, it'll probably be a 27 point blowout. No, I'm kidding. But yeah, this <laughs> is I, I like this game. I'm, and uh, but but. Even with all of them, you can always find angles, um, you know, in game live if it really comes down to it and you're unsure. And that's why I would always recommend if you're unsure, either stay off and go that direction or maybe even maybe a little less on your wager early in and then take to see if you can find some advantages in the game live. Yeah, for sure. And uh, that's what makes our in game live premium room that much more important, guys. So mm-hmm. if you haven't taken advantage of that, sgdwins.com. Come over there, buy the membership, and then get into the live premium room. And uh, you, know, you get the best of both worlds. You get our premium selections, and you get the, the in-game wagering. So, um, all right, Philly, let's go ahead and get out of here, man. This is uh, you know six games. It's early. Yes, sir. And uh, I guess I'll talk to you off air, and we'll try to nail down one of these a couple one of these games for our premium card. And um, yep. guys, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And uh, you ready to get out of here? Yes, sir. Have a wonderful Monday. If you're on the East Coast, stay dry. It's a little shitty out here, but uh, have a wonderful day, and we'll talk to you soon. And uh, best of luck on your wagers today. All right. Good luck to you. Good luck to me. Good luck to everybody. We'll see you all later. Peace. See you guys.